Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. It's me, SB. So today I received my Centro 22. I don't, I don't know if it's actually the brand Centro, but you know, it says on the box that it's Centro and it's more than a toy and whatever. But I bought this on Timu. Timu? I always want to say Timo. But anyways, I bought this on Timu for 16 bucks, and I thought that's a pretty good deal. Why not? And I received it, I put it together, and I kind of practiced with it a little bit to see how it was going to go. But I noticed that it was a little rough going. As you're going to hear it. It's pretty rough sounding, so I decided to go ahead and take this apart. Um, I have done this with the big machine, the 48. Quick disclaimer here guys, if you are going to do this, do this at your own risk. I am not a professional and nor do I claim that white lithium grease works really well with this plastic, although in my experience it has lasted with my other Centro machine, but there have been sources that said that it degraded plastic. So I don't know how true it is, so like I said, do this at your own risk. But I'm gonna see how this comes apart. So we are gonna go on this adventure together. Bet you're excited. I bought this on Amazon, like, I don't know, a couple years ago, and it came with two, and yeah, it's a lot, because you do not need a whole bunch to grease anything. This is gonna last you for like a lifetime. Anyways, another thing you're gonna need is a set of small screwdrivers. Um, I got this one at Dollar Tree. First step is to determine where all the screws are. If we look down here, we see that there are two screws here. And then if we flip the machine over, you'll see that there are slots here for screws. So there are four screws here, two screws on top, and then I do believe there's a screw here, but I don't think we have to mess with this. Usually this just pops right off. Yeah. And there's a screw there for the handle. So I'm gonna start with the bottom here. So I'm gonna flip it over, and these legs actually don't hold anything in. They're just like snapped in there. So I am going to go in here and see if I can't find the right thing. Jeez. It might be easier if I do pop off the legs. Excuse me. If I can. Okay. There we go. Oof. Wowzers. Those are on there. Let me tell you, those... Oh, wow. That one is on there. Good. Alright, I'm gonna have to manhandle this. Come on, I don't want to break it. I can see the plastic starting to turn kind of white. So I better stop messing with it. Okay, at least I got the other ones off. But as you can see, these like compress and pop in there. So yeah. Yeah, sometimes these screws are in there like really, really good. Sometimes I wonder, whenever I do stuff like this, like, what am I getting into? Oh, there it goes. Don't lose the screws. Just takes a little manhandling sometimes, or woman handling, however you want to say it. We're all human, some of us. It's like when you want the screws to come out, they don't. And then when they do, you, they fall in a weird place. Okay. Let's see. 
All right, we definitely want to get it this way because we want to lift this off. There we go. And those screws are still stuck in there. See that? There we go. There's one. Where's the other one? See that screw is still stuck in there? It's crazy. You're crazy. Get out of there. Normally you don't need to put anything on this part because it's, you know, let's see. Just trying to gauge here. It might help if we put a little bit right here on the edges, but I don't think it will really. So we're going to take this top part off, our little hooks, set that aside, we're going to pull this off as you can see, just slides right off, set that aside, and now we have all of our might as well and then we can lift this out and all of our hooks are going to fall so just be careful you see and now we have our center part so let's get all these out try not to lose them I went and grabbed some paper towels And I also grabbed some isopropyl alcohol so that way we can wipe off all of this oil. And yeah, it's going to be a process because every single one of these hooks have grease on them, like oil. Like, I don't know if you can see it at all, but it's literally oil that they put on it. Alternatively, you probably could also um, just throw these in the sink and then some Dawn dish soap, you know, and get all that oil off. But I'm not about that life. <laughs> and oh yeah, my nails. You see my nails? I wear press-ons, so, you know, they last maybe like a week and then they start popping off and sometimes I have the desire, I guess, to go ahead and re-glue some of them on because they, they are the first ones to pop off for some reason. And then after all of them fall off, like there's always this one stubborn one that will not fall off and it happens to be my thumbnail. So you get to see my pretty nail. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I like press-ons because I don't like my nails. My nails are not the prettiest nails ever. They're ridgy, they're, they're just not, <laughs> they're not pretty. I wish I, I had a set of pretty real nails, but I don't. I think it's just because I like working my, with my hands a lot, so I kind of messed up my nails throughout the years of, you know, never wearing gloves and doing things. Like now I should be wearing gloves, really. I'm working with alcohol. And it dries out your skin, it dries out your nails. I mean, but here I am, working, working without gloves. I don't know. It is what it is, right? You live, and you live, and then you don't. Probably a Q-tip would, would work pretty good, but you'd probably go through a lot of them. A lot of q-tips. I don't know, I might actually have to take the center one out now that I'm looking at it. Okay, so I got all of my little hooks cleaned off, got most of the grease or the oil off of them. So now I'm going to work on the center carriage thing because, wow, that is full of grease.
All right, well, I'm happy with that. I got most of that grease out of there. So now I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna get this, and I'm gonna go ahead and take out this center piece here, simply because I need to get in here and clean all this out. And you'll find sometimes, well, on my old, on my 48 machine, this little area here actually cracked. So just be careful. Don't over tighten those screws that you have there. And I'm just going to reuse this paper towel to clean this off because it is full of grease. Alright, I think that's gonna do. That's gonna work for me. Okay, now can we remember how to put it back together? So this is the front part. It's actually kind of rough. Like the plastic wasn't molded correctly. Okay, anyways. So this sits in here like so. We got our crank that moves our center. So I'm gonna add a little bit of grease to this and here's our trusty white lithium grease it is very thick and we are just gonna need a tiny bit sometimes it's hard just to get a tiny bit and I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit here and there to our wheel here Like I say, you don't need a whole lot. Okay. And I'm just going to pop this back on. And we're just going to go around. And let it get into all the grooves. But you know what they say, the groove is in the heart. So now we should have a little bit of grease on all of these and a little bit of grease on this. That's perfect. We could even add a little bit probably to this part here. You probably could get that screw out in the handle to replace the little cog thing, the gear. Call it a cog. The gear thing. See, it amazes me that hair just is attracted to this. Ah, look at that. And this does have some grease on it. Look at that. Let's clean this off. Look at this hair, too. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. And let's add a little bit of grease on this. Right there. There we go. And I will put a little bit on this end here, just a little dot. So we're getting there. We are getting there. Okay, so what I decided to do was to set this upside down and I put everything back together. I think it's gonna be easier doing it this way. And this is gonna sit in just like that. So this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm gonna put some grease on either side of this right here. So that way it kind of is able to slide in there. And we are not gonna need a whole lot. I'm just gonna kind of get that right there. And I am going to put a little bit on the back. It's probably not necessary, but you know. And now we're going to find the notch. It's right here. We're going to make sure that we have it set the right way. And we're just going to let that fall in. 
and there it is. All right, guys, so what I'm doing here is completely wrong, but I left it in to show you that it's okay to make mistakes. Eventually, you figure it out. But we're going to speed past all this mistake and go to where I actually figure it out. The process of greasing the hooks is going to be the same. It's just going to be a little easier the other way. Okay guys, I'm such a nerd. We actually do need to leave this middle cylinder out in order for us to get our pegs back in there. I had to look up another video on how she did it because it has been a while since I've done this. And yeah, so yes, leave that peg out. Let's drop this in. Make sure we have our, you know, wheel where it can move. And now we can drop our... Oh, guys, so many mistakes in this video. <laughs> I'm over here putting the pegs in upside down. It's okay. I fix it. It's just hilarious to me <laughs> watching it back. It's, it's funny. Don't worry. I realize it. <laughs> I was avoiding the grease, but here we are. No, wait. I'm so... Oh, my gosh. Hold on. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, okay, duh. No messing around with the way I was doing it. I was mistaken on how to put this back together. So yeah, don't do what I do. And we got them all on there. Yay! That was way easier than the way I was doing it. I'm going to wipe this grease up now. So I'm not getting grease all over everything. Alright, so now... Yeah, that's not going to fall down, but that's okay. I'm going to leave my black peg up because that is our first peg. And as you can see... We have a little opening, a little cutout here, and a little like notch on the side, and that's where this is going to fit. So I am actually going to put a little bit of grease around here, around this edge, because it does kind of move. It doesn't move a lot, but just to kind of, you know, help it out a little bit. And now we can pop this back on. Because see, it does kind of move. And now it's going to be a little smoother. And there we go. I forgot the center thing. I forgot the center thing. Oh no. We're not ready. Oh no. Don't come up. Stay in there. I forgot to put the center back in. That's why. Wow. Tell me something, guys. I almost like totally just like, oh, yay, we're done. And in reality, we were not. Back in. Get them all settled back. I can't see the other ones now. Where they're at. get him. All right, I got him. Now where's our one, our black peg? It doesn't feel like it's in there correctly. It seems like there might be one that's off, but nope. Okay, our black peg's there. So, where's number one? Number one is right there. We'll sit right in the middle. 
it, it just doesn't feel like it's very secure. There's hair everywhere. My cat puts hair everywhere. Okay, we got that in. Good, everything looks good now. Finally. Now let's go ahead and put our screws back in. Okay guys, even though I screwed up, I hope that you learn from my mistakes and how to properly take apart your Centro. The 48 is exactly the same way, it's just bigger and it's going to take you a little longer. But yeah, it's pretty fun. It sounds much better now. It doesn't sound crunchy anymore. Because I noticed like on the black one, the black peg, it was like... I don't know, feeling weird. Like it would kind of click, but now it doesn't click anymore. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and, you know, helps you make your not a toy knitting machine last a little longer. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. And happy crafting, happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy tatting, happy everything. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Bye!